This video is sponsored by Skillshare. With the winter months finally upon us, one thing that I've often struggled with is seasonal depression. Certainly the first snowfall in Minnesota looks magical, and yet it also carries with it a sense of dread. The dread of a long, dark, ominous winter ahead. And invariably I found that my mental health has taken a toll. This winter, I want to be more conscious about my mental health, and so for the last week, I've been researching ways to keep mental health strong, and in particular, ways that you can keep dopamine levels high. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter that is associated with the anticipation of pleasure, and high natural dopamine levels are linked with reduced addictive behavior, better enthusiasm, motivation, a willingness to take on more motion, and it's key. It's paramount to feeling good this winter. The ideas for this video come from two books, The Molecule of More and The Neurogenesis Diet and Lifestyle, alongside a couple of online articles and research papers, but I will link all of my sources in the description box. And so the first principle, the single most important thing you can do this winter to keep your mental health high, your dopamine levels high, is to wake up without an alarm. This is an idea that I got from Tom Bilyeu of Impact Theory. He has often talked about how waking up without an alarm, getting as much sleep as your body needs naturally, is the single most powerful thing you can do. Sleep is the highest return on investment. Research shows that lack of sleep downregulates dopamine receptors and reduces dopamine receptor availability and sensitivity in the brain. If you can generally speaking be asleep between 10 p.m. and 12 a.m. and wake up whenever your body feels naturally inclined to do so, you will stand a much better chance of being cognitively optimized. This is the single most powerful thing you can do for your brain and perhaps also the most difficult because I do like to get up early and I am someone who often gives into the hustle culture of the times, but it is important I think to remind yourself that getting sleep, it's not a luxury, it's one of the best things you can do for yourself. Principle number two, eat a neurogenesis inducing diet. In particular, focus on protein, especially the amino acid tyrosine and a couple of micronutrients. I read a book called The Neurogenesis Diet and Lifestyle. The author of that book makes a case for four superfoods in particular that give you the highest return on investment when it comes to neurogenesis, making new brain cells and being cognitively optimized. Those are blue Blueberries, sources of omega 3s such as avocados, curcumin, and green tea. Principle number three cut out sugar. This was perhaps the most insightful and profound part of my research, although none of what I'm saying is probably going to be all that profound. It's something you might have heard before. But sugar is actually pretty strongly linked to depression and anxiety. Rodents fed high fat, high sugar diets showed a decrease in BDNF levels. Other reasons for this link is that sugar is associated with increased inflammation and exaggerated insulin response. And because of its addictive effects, these could all be affecting the dopaminergic neurotransmission mechanism from sugar. Do not eat it. It will kill you. I'm actually in the midst of a 30 day no sugar challenge right now and I am excited to see how it might affect my mental clarity and my inflammation. Sometimes I do feel extra achy after a workout and I'm curious to see if this might have an effect on it. It is kind of a difficult time of year to try to reduce sugar intake but if you can it might improve mental health and clarity over the winter months. Principle number four, get exercise, especially aerobic exercise if you can. Physical exercise is one of the best things you can do for your brain. This was the central tenet of John Rady's book called Spark, but exercise increases BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor in the brain, by up to a thousand percent, and it certainly is linked with elevated mood, reduced depression, and greater levels of dopamine. Of course, there's nothing new with this principle, but at times I do convince myself that I need to go straight to the office rather than get my morning workout in and invariably when I do get the mental poison out when I work out when I sweat it out it makes a profound difference on my day so if you can this winter focus on exercise. Principle number five, meditation. There have been over a thousand studies on the benefits of meditation and several studies have linked it directly to higher dopamine levels. One such study was by the John F. Kennedy Institute in Denmark, but I've been a huge advocate of meditating. I think it's one of the better things you can do for yourself. And I'm certainly gonna try to put even more of a focus on meditating this winter to not miss sessions, to get it done and to treat it like a daily discipline that I have to show up to every day. Principle number six, in 
invest in deep learning. Perhaps one of the better things you can do in terms of neurogenesis and forming new dendritic connections in the brain is to be excited about learning and have things on the docket that you're continually working on. Several years ago, I had read a book called The Talent Code and it talked about how learning actually affects the myelin sheath of the brain, which is the coding that goes around the axons of your neurons in your brain. And it makes synapses fire faster. So by learning, you actually cause your brain to get stronger, more resilient, less depressive, and actually grow. I mention this also because this video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you don't know already, Skillshare is an online platform taught by world-class educators on topics in business, marketing, film, editing. I, in particular, really benefited recently from a course on productivity by Thomas Frank, and I've also started a Final Cut Pro X course by Ali Abdal, and I'm really enjoying it. Online education is actually something that I'm a deep advocate of because it changed my life. The reason that I have a job that I'm really happy with today is because of self-study online. And Skillshare is a fantastic platform by which you can teach yourself skills that are relevant, that are exciting, and that can get you closer to your goals. If you use my link below for a limited time, you will get a two month free trial to using Skillshare. I highly recommend you check it out and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting so many creators that I love on this platform. And the final principle cold showers. Now, the results behind this have been somewhat inconclusive. There was one study in particular that every online source mentioned, which said that dopamine levels could be increased by 250% by cold showers. This might work because of the high density of cold receptors in the skin. A cold shower could send an overwhelming amount of electrical impulses from peripheral nerve endings to the brain, which could result in an antidepressive effect. But at least from anecdotal evidence, evidence, I can tell you that cold showers have been one of the fastest ways I've elevated my mood. It works almost every single time that I feel better after a cold shower. I'm not sure why, but it's fantastically invigorating. And even though it's brutally hard to take them in the winter months, I think they're especially beneficial in the winter. So if you're up for it, if you're feeling brave, if you're feeling the Viking spirit in you, take a cold shower this winter and see how it affects you. These are the seven principles, the seven most powerful ways that I could come up with of how you can have higher dopamine levels this winter, better mental health. And even though none of these principles should be that surprising to hear about, I think it is important to remember the basics, remember the fundamentals, and especially to focus on taking care of your mental health this coming winter. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.